Here's a little sneak peek into the course. With Sadia. Hey, Sadia. How are you doing? Hi, I'm great. Hi, Elizabeth. Hi, Ali. How are you guys doing? Good. Pretty good. Thanks. For smaller channels, does this work? Like as a smaller channel, should I also point to just one video at the end of the video versus having multiple calls of actions? Yeah, so generally saying subscribe at the end of a video doesn't actually do anything. The rationale behind one call to action rather than multiple is that when people have to think about multiple things, they don't take any action at all. So if the user has to think, oh, do I want to watch this video or do I want to watch that video? Then suddenly they're thinking, do I want to watch YouTube at all? And they close your channel and that's not good. A niche is a combination of a target and a value. And then your value can come through multiple topics as your vehicles for delivering that value. So who is your target and what is the value? And then that will help us answer, does it make sense to talk about admissions and scholarships? My target audience is students who are thinking about getting into engineering, but not absolutely sure yet. So they want to get into engineering. Okay, cool. And, and what's the value that you provide to your target audience? Making it easier for them to decide to get into engineering or not. Okay, yeah, in that case, that sounds perfect. Here's my 100% honest review of Ali Abdal's $5,000 part-time YouTuber Academy course. Here's what my videos looked like before taking the course. I love hardcover books. And here's what my videos looked like at the end of the course. The average salary of an electrical engineer at Apple is $127,000. Well, you might be thinking, oh, that's just Apple. The course also gave me the courage to create my own course on Skillshare about how to make your CV not boring and beat the 96% rejection rates that CVs get. Link in the description if you want to check that out. For context, I attended the course on a scholarship since my own YouTube channel doesn't make any money. In fact, I'm losing money making these videos. So yeah, there's no way I would have been able to afford this course. I think it's very generous of Ali to offer the scholarship for this course, but that won't prevent me from including the bad and the ugly about the course in this video. For the sake of this video, let's assume that I got the basic package, which is a $1,500. So, is the course worth the $1,500 basic package? Yes, absolutely yes, it's totally worth it. Would I say the same thing about the $2,500 and the $5,000 package? Mm, no, not really, especially if you're on a budget. But first things first, how did I get this scholarship? Actually, it was one of the simplest scholarship applications that I have ever applied for. They basically ask you two or three questions to answer in text, and then you have to answer a couple of questions in the form of a two minute video. In the video, you explain why you need this scholarship and how would this scholarship benefit you and your YouTube channel, or what are your goals for your YouTube channel. Here's a clip from the video that I made for the scholarship. My Twitter bio says that I'm a YouTuber, engineer, founder of a student volunteers group, and a PhD student. But am I really all those things? That's it. That's how I got the scholarship. Here's the course curriculum. It was a six weeks course for cohort five. That wasn't the case always. I'm told cohort one or two were not maybe six weeks. They maybe were four weeks. So they might change the duration in future after the feedback or something. But for cohort five, it was a six weeks course. And boy, oh boy, it was intense. In week one, you focus on how to succeed on YouTube and the ultimate guide to production value. Week two has sessions that focus on defining and refining your niche, 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 I don't know how it's pronounced. The next week, you focus on how to get people to click. So basically focus on titles and thumbnails and how to keep them engaged. In week four, we talk about how to make people fall in love with your channel, some branding guidelines, some systemizing and scaling your production process. Week five is focused on building an audience on multiple platforms and outsourcing your video editing process and other things about your channel. And finally, in week six, we talk about monetization. But those are not the only things we talk about in this course. Even though the curriculum only mentions these topics, Per week, there are two sessions with Ali, one session with Elizabeth, one guest session, and then one on Friday question and answers panel. So yeah, there's much more to this course than just this outline. Is there anything new that you will learn in this course? Probably not. 
there's no new knowledge in the course, no magic formula that you will learn and apply on your YouTube channel and your videos will instantly become magically awesome. You can probably learn all those things on your own by trial and error, by experimenting, by watching other YouTube channels. In fact, Ali himself recommends channels like Think Media, Gerald Dundon, Film Booth, Nick Nimmin, some other channels that if you watch their videos, you can probably get there on your own. The problem is, if you follow that strategy, it will probably take you around two to three years to get to this sort of production value and this sort of comfort in front of a camera. Whereas in the course, taking six weeks course gives you the same amount of knowledge that you would get on your own in two to three years by watching other YouTube videos. The course is so densely packed that you cannot possibly implement all the lessons learned that you learn in these six weeks. You will need to watch and re-watch and re-watch the course again and again to be able to implement all these lessons. The good things about the course. Here are the seven things that I really really liked about the course. The first thing being the feedback on the homework videos. So as part of this course, you have a homework to post one video per week and then you post the link of that video in Circle Community where you get a detailed feedback on your video your titles, your hook, your thumbnails, your production quality, your personality, everything, every aspect of your video is covered in that feedback and the feedback is very detailed and very helpful. I tried to follow uh, the homework prompt but I couldn't really, I only followed the prompt for the week two which was making a short. For others, I didn't really follow the prompt that they give you for this homework but I still got feedback on every single one of my videos and it was very very helpful. For, for every week I tried to incorporate that feedback into every next video and my video quality has improved as a result of that. The second thing that I really liked about the course was the subclubs. So you are put into different clubs based on your subscriber count. So there is a beginner subclub, there is a 1k subclub, there's a 10k, 100k subclubs. So I was in the 1000 subscriber count. So based on that, I was in a subclub where other people were also around the same subscriber counts. These sessions were amazing and so, so, so full of value. We were talking about the problems that we have and everybody who was at the similar subscriber count kind of had the similar problems. There was no Ali in the session, so it gave us a chance to be frank with each other, talk about our problems, ask beginner level stupid questions that you might not feel very comfortable asking in front of 300 other people. So since these sessions were more intimate, not recorded, small group of people, it was very easy to ask questions that you might feel dumb asking in front of a large audience. And the third most awesome thing about the course was the Friday panels, the question and answer sessions with Ali and Elizabeth, where you get to raise your hand on Zoom, get to ask the questions about your channel, the feedback about your channel, specific questions related to your thumbnails, hooks, banner, and Ali and Elizabeth directly give you feedback about your channels and answer your questions in those sessions. Here's a clip where I ask Ali a question. To what extent we should be watching the content of our competitors slash collaborators when we are at 1K, 10K, 100K for all these levels? I would suggest spend lots of time watching it at 1K and 10K. When you're in the 100K mark, at that point, you are probably concerned about accidentally plagiarizing. So at the 100K mark, I would stop watching other people's and just use them as inspiration in terms of titles and thumbnails. The fourth thing that I really liked about the course were the drop-in Q&A sessions. So these were two times a day, in the morning and in the evening, based on wherever you are in the world. These are very, very frank sessions. You can drop in anytime, ask your questions, leave it. There's no obligation to stay through the entire session. You can just drop in, ask your questions. They are facilitated by the official PTYA student supporters and you get to ask any questions that you might have about the course or about anything, about your YouTube channel or whatever you're struggling with. The fifth aspect of the course that I really, really appreciate is the community. Yes, there is a circle community, a discord where all of the students who are enrolled in the course are present, but that's not the only community platform. You get to make friends, you get to hang out with other YouTubers, and then you get to take them with you on other platforms wherever you go. So we also had a discord channel for the community. We also ended up making our own WhatsApp group, more discord sub channels, and 
I'm now also hosting Twitter spaces with all of these YouTuber friends that I have made, which is awesome. The sixth thing that I really liked about this course is as you progress through the course and as Ali and Elizabeth are delivering these sessions, they also share these Notion templates to fill in, which are very, very useful. Ali has pre-filled templates for audience avatar, competitor analysis, content coal mines, and a bunch of other uh, Notion templates where you get to see how he analyzes stuff for his channel and then you get to do that for your own channel. You get to fill those Notion templates with information that is relevant to your channel, but you don't start from scratch. You already have Ali's analysis as an inspiration to look from when you're trying to create your own audience avatar. For example, his audience avatar is Mo the Medic, who is a medical student, Ali's younger self and a bit more dumb self. And finally, the seventh thing that I really liked about the course is that you don't have to worry about what kind of gear is appropriate for your channel. It doesn't matter what your budget is. From beginner to pro, for every budget level, there is a selected gear list available that you get access to right after registering the course. I think there is even a free version available even if you're not registered for the course. If you just google something like Ali Abdal gear, he has different levels of gear available for all levels of budget that you have. He lists all the gear that he used as a beginner and what gear he recommends for intermediate YouTubers versus what gear people should use if they've got a lot of cash to spend. That was everything good about the course, which is all nice and good. But if you want to know what I didn't like about the course, then watch this video next where I explain all the bad things about PTYA.